So I asked you what you wanted to see next on my channel. Most of you said more editing tutorials on Iman Gaji. So I figured I'll show you a little sneak peek of what client work looks like and specifically an effect that I took heavy inspiration from Iman Gaji. And I'm going to show you two effects in increasing difficulty that I've done for a client. One that is a little bit easier and the second one is actually going to be in 3D space. So it's not for everyone. It's for a little more advanced editors. But either way, if you're looking to work with me or if you're looking to get better at editing, just stick around till the end of the video because I'll give you more information on everything. So this first effect is pretty straightforward, but I like how it has a clean look to it. Simple colors and overall it's pretty simple to make. So let's get into the fusion composition here. Number one, we have this grid here. This is the background that you're seeing here and I also have guides shown up. So you just right click on the screen, go to guides and show guides. This basically that will show you like the center of everything so you can center your objects. Uh, you can see here I have a grid node, which you can find by pressing shift space or control space, depending on if you're on Windows or Mac. So you just put a grid in here and you can copy these settings and then connected to that, I have a gradient. The bottom color is black here and you can see it goes up to a dark, gray color. The next thing I have is a rectangle node plugged into the grid to kind of fade it out at the top. So you can see the soft edge. If I turn it down all the way, this fading out effect will kind of disappear. And I have it cut out to here because after this rectangle, I just wanted to fade out. It just looks better in my opinion. So I just turn this soft edge up and it gives it this look. Next thing we have the two boxes. This is like an invest and save and spend thing because in the video he's talking about how a lot of entrepreneurs spend or save their money instead of investing. So you can see how I use vectors here to create a little animation of money going into the save and spend box rather than the invest box. So this right here, if I click two while selecting this, it'll show this node in specific is. It is a box vector that I got connected to a color corrector node. I just wanted to make it blue because I think it looks better than just the regular color of the box. And from the color corrector, we split it into two merge nodes, one for the first box, and you can take the input and drag it again into this one. So if I delete this, I'll just show you what it looks like. You just drag it again into this box here, create another merge node. If I press two on here, you see you can get another box. And this only works if you're not actually going to change anything in specific about each one. So if I press two on the final product here, you can see the next thing is I have text with a corner. So in order to make it look realistic, like the text is actually on the box, you have text here. If you want to know the font, it's called Monument Extended, regular. Take your corner positioner and it's pretty simple. You just position it in the way that you want it. And same thing with the save slash spend text. That part is pretty self-explanatory. Now, next is just some filters to make everything look good. And behind that, we have a node tree right here which is the dollar bill. So you can see this is what it looks like. It's just a PNG. Then I put the waviness effect on it to give it a little animation. You can copy my settings. Color corrector to go with the blue theme and straight into a merge node, which is a animation that comes down. So on the first frame, frame zero, I have it up here on frame 51, I have it go into the box. And normally this would be in front of the box, but I have a polygon node here that cuts it out and I have it plugged into the blue triangle of the merge node. This means that if the dollar goes outside of this polygon, it will not show up. So it looks like it's actually going inside of the box. Next, I, I applied a waviness node to the whole thing to give it this jitter effect. And after that, I have a filter here so it's a it's like a grunge video i found it on pexels i'll leave the pexels link in the description so you can download it for yourself but it's this cool filter here i put it on a time speed note to slow it down because it was a little too fast for my liking so this is what it looks like and i put it on 0 0.6 speed which basically puts on 60 percent speed i believe and it goes straight into a merge node, which is set on screen. So this is what it looks like normal. That's way too much, obviously. Screen, it's a lot better looking. And I turned down the gain as well. After that, we have a vignette just to give everything more depth, even though it is 2D. After that, we have another filter. There's a lot of filters because this is very common with the Iman Gaji style. And that's what this extra noise overlay is for. So it's like a film noise overlay with these particles going around. I have this plugged into a merge node on the apply mode screen. And finally, the media out, which is just the end of it. And that's the whole act. 
This next effect is actually in 3D space. It's inspired heavily by one of the animations that Iman has in his video, and I recreated it in DaVinci Resolve. So my client is talking about when you start a business, you're gonna need three things. And the first one, and you can see when he's talking about this, I'm introducing those three elements here. And if I go into the Fusion page, it's going to look like a lot of nodes, but you can break it down into components here. This, each of these trees here, you could call them, are the three elements. So let's break it down simply. To turn something 2D into 3D, you'll basically need four nodes usually. One is the image plane node, which takes something 2D, puts it on a plane that you can transform in 3D space. And this image plane needs to be connected into a merge node. Also, what else needs to be connected into the merge node is a camera, and the camera will control the field of view. Now the merge node output needs to be connected into a render 3D, and it's exactly what it's called. It just renders out your 3D space back into the video. And then after you can apply all of your overlays, like a vignette, a film noise overlay, grain, whatever it is. So you can see I have two image planes connected into the 3D node. And by the way, it doesn't matter what order it's in because you can always use the image plane to change the position of things which is in front of each other. So I usually like to close my media pool here so I have a little more space. Click these two squares to open up the dual viewer and adjust my screen here. So now I have the final product view. You can see if I press two on media out, it's gonna show me the final product on my second screen. And I wanna press one on this merge 3D. And this is basically how you work in 3D space in DaVinci Resolve. You wanna have your merge 3D on the left side here and your media out on the right side. Now on the left side, you can control everything in 3D, including the camera, the image planes, what's in front of each other, and then you can look at the final product right here. So the first image plane down here is simply just the background. It's a gradient background. You can see it's gray. It's, and you can see, I'm gonna press two on it to show you what it looks like, pretty simple. And over that, I have a grid with a rectangle, exactly like what I showed you with the other animation. And on top of that, I put a diagonal blue and red gradient. And on the merge node, you can see the blend is turned down halfway. So that's basically the opacity. And I put a waviness node on top of that to animate the background a little bit. So that part is pretty simple. You can see if I press two on the image plane, it looks like this. And let's say you wanna move this. By the way, I'm on Mac, so I'm not sure what it is on Windows, but I basically hold shift to move around to rotate and move around like this. Hold command and scroll out to zoom in and out and just move my trackpad. So I can use these arrows here to move this forward, move it backwards, move it up, or I can go into the inspector tab while I'm selecting the image plane, go to transform and change everything here. So you can see the X, Y, and Z values and the rotation as well. And if I wanna do it within the screen, I just click this, you can affect, you can change the rotation as well. And you can also change the size of it with the scale slider here. Now next, I wanna press two to see my final product. And we have this other image plane. You can see this is what it looks like in 3D space. I wanna rotate it. It is ever so slightly in front. You can see there's a gap here just to create some depth. And starting with the first one, they're all pretty much the same, so I won't really have to cover all of them. But the first one, if I press two here, it's just a rectangle node plugged into a background node. So, so far it's just a black rectangle with rounded corners. So the corner radius is up a little bit, 0.13. Then I merged in a blue ellipse, so you can see an ellipse node with a soft edge made of blue, and it kind of acts as a blue light. So you can see the gradient is blue here. It makes sense that it's shining the blue light on the black rectangle. And it's important that on the merge node, you select the operator atop. This makes sure that everything is within the rectangle. So if I just select over, you can see it's outside of it, atop it's inside of the rectangle. Next part, you have this red edge here. This is just the same exact thing, except that this time I decided to use a rectangle node. I inverted it, and of course it's red, so this is what it looks like normally. It has a soft edge, it's inverted, and this is what it looks like within the rectangle. Next, I merged on the text. So it's just monument extended, the number one, nothing really special about this. I merged on a very softened and I lowered the level as well of this black rectangle here. This is what it looks like. And once you merge it on top, 
and of course select the top so it's all within the rectangle. It kind of creates this fading into black gradient here. Of course, if we're gonna have all these elements here, we need to have a background node to place it on. So I have a background node here, the alpha is set all the way down so it's transparent. And you just merge this first one here and you can move it to the side with this merge node. And the second one, the exact same thing. Third one, the exact same thing, just with different numbers. Now, if I go into the 3D space, you can see there's a camera here actually, and I did a little animation on it. So the white markers indicate the keyframes. The camera is pointing at an angle like this. And of course, in the camera node, you just can control the position with these arrows or within this transform tab here. So I keyframed everything, including the rotation and the position, and the camera is looking at it with an upwards angle. I just did a simple animation of the camera panning down very slightly with the rotation. Now the next part of this animation is the same exact thing, just with some more camera work. So I'm gonna turn the playback timeline resolution to a quarter, which is going to lower the resolution in the playback viewer, but it will just reduce the lag so you guys can actually see what is happening. So from here, I animated the camera on frame 81. I put a keyframe on all of the rotation and all of the position keyframes. Then on frame 115, I moved the camera to kind of zoom in on the first element here. You can see this is what it looks like in real time, like that. And of course we wanna smooth everything out. So you select the camera 3D node, go to spline, click this box here to select everything, zoom to fit. And if you wanna make this window bigger, you can. So it will probably look like this for you. You can see where the animation is happening. I select this area and press S to smooth everything out. Then you can press T to adjust the ease in and ease out. And this is going to affect how intense you want the animation to be. The next thing is the text. So in the video, he says the first thing you need when you're starting business is something to sell. So I have the text fade in here from the bottom. And how I do this is I added a text node here on this same image plane as the background. So you can see if I zoom in here, it is connected right on the background and the numbers are on a separate image plane. So the text animates in here. It starts at a lower position and moves up. Of course, it's smoothed out. And how I get it to kind of fade in here, you can see it's faded, is we have a rectangle mask with a soft edge. So if I press two on the text node, you can see it up to here. So it's not affected by any merge nodes. And the rectangle is here text is right here and I made it glow with a glow node. The next part of the animation is the second thing that he talks about which is a good marketing and sales process. So the camera simply moves from the first element, the second one, and the text comes in. And for the third element it's the same exact thing. It talks about how hiring is also important. It's the same thing as the second one so I'll just explain the second one really quick. First, we have a camera animation from frame zero. I put a keyframe on the X and Z values and the X rotation value, then move it over here to put the number two in the center of the frame. Then I copy and paste this node tree to add a second text node, which is the good marketing and sales process. And it's set up exactly the same as the first one. So pretty self-explanatory. And of course, the third one is set up the exact same way. If you're watching this and you're a little bit confused, you feel like maybe this is too advanced for you, I'm gonna leave a tutorial in the top right of the screen here that is more for beginners or intermediates. So you can go ahead and check that out. And before you leave, I have two links in the description that will help you become a better editor with very little effort, very little time. One is called Artlist and the next one is called Motion Array. They're both really good subscription services. One is to get really high quality music if you're interested in the Iman Gaji style. You can get music like that or just any high quality music for YouTube videos copyright free of course and motion ray is going to give you a bunch of templates stock footage they even have sound effects as well and macros for davinci resolve uh, adobe after effects premiere pro whatever software you want to use they probably have something for it so i'd recommend you at least go check those out and i do get a small commission if you buy their service so that helped a lot if you're interested in working with us first link in the description you can check out my website and see what we do we help entrepreneurs coaches and consultants grow their audience and generate automatic warm leads. So go check that out.